Hey everybody, this is Rob with Fruit of Labor Landscaping. We're out here in the Serene Forest today and we have an opportunity to go over uh, some really key differences in our Florida native porterweed and our non-native porterweeds. I got this opportunity because a non-native ended up volunteering in a pot that I had the aquatic milkweed um, growing kind of in our nursery area. And the nursery that I ended up getting this plant from is not one of my trustworthy native nurseries. And I've never seen them sell native porterweed, so I already had a pretty good idea that the porterweed that volunteered in here was not going to be native um, but I needed to let it grow a little bit longer in order to verify and now we've gotten to a point where the distinction can be made really easily and I just want to show you guys that. So I'm not going to pretend like I know how to say the botanical or scientific names of these two so I'm going to put them as a uh, subtitle or in the comments. Um, distinguishing the two botanically um, but we will definitely talk about the differences in the growth habit the leaves and a little bit about the flower too as far as distinguishing the native and the non-native so here we're going to start with the native porterweed and as you can tell it is a very low growing and sprawling plant I have this in my front yard. It gets around maybe six hours of sun. It's right along my driveway. And I have a pot in the middle of it with some parsley, which we rarely eat, but since it hosts the uh, Eastern Black Swallowtail, um, I plant it kind of randomly. The thought here was that I would have the parsley here in the middle of the porterweed and that way when a butterfly comes to host on it, it can just take a sip of nectar from the porterweed either on the way in or on the way out. But anyway, the point of the whole pot uh, for this video was just to show you guys uh, just how tall porter the native porterweed gets. You know, this pot is maybe a foot tall and the only reason some of this porterweed is as tall as that is because the leaves are or sorry the stems are just kind of hanging out on top otherwise they'd be lower like the ones over here so we're looking at probably no more than about 10 to 20 inches mature height of native porterweed and that is uh, one of the easiest and most identifiable uh, differences between the native and the non-native. The non-natives, there's two, uh, two different botanical named uh, non-natives, and both of them get out, you know, up to a couple of feet, uh, you know, five feet, maybe even seven feet tall, and uh, they have much more upright growth habit. And we'll show you that in a second with the one that I have in the pot. All right, so as you can tell, this porterweed in the pot just immediately starts off upright and then terminates in the flower up here unlike the native which sprawls and even the um, even the flowering parts are going more lateral than they are vertical All right, so next we're gonna talk about the leaves. And I think that uh, besides size, uh, the leaves are gonna be one of the more tricky ways to identify the native and non-native. Obviously the non-native here on the left is a lot larger in size, uh, which is a good indicator. Be a little bit more difficult on a young plant. And the other difference that you're supposed to be able to see, although I think it's pretty difficult in this instance, is these, you know, the toothed um, edges of these leaves 
The native is supposed to be more forward pointing or towards the tip of the leaf, which you can kind of see here. But on this non-native, I think it's doing a pretty good job of uh, mostly facing towards the tip. I think maybe back here we're getting a little bit more lateral, but if you look at this native leaf too, the the kind of sawtooth edge towards the back, it, it kind of points a little bit out too. I mean, I guess you could argue and say that the native does a little bit better job of pointing towards the front or the tip of the leaf than this non-native does. But anyway, that's what's supposed to be one of the uh, distinguishing characteristics. Another characteristic of the leaf that is supposed to help you tell them apart is, um, and again, I think this is a little subjective as well, but the non-native is supposed to have a more raised appearance in between the leaf veins, which you can kind of see here. I think the native has raised um, areas in between the leaf veins too, but obviously the non-native is is more prominent, which could, you know, in my opinion, maybe just be to the size of the leaf, but um, they, they're calling this a quilted appearance here on the non-native, which is supposed to help you tell it apart. Okay, so another thing we can look at is the flower. And unfortunately for these examples, the flower color and the color of the center of the flower is pretty much the same on these two. Now the native does have a much darker coloration on this flower stem. Uh, forgive me, I might be failing on my terminology there, so I'll correct myself in the notes as to what we should actually call that. Um, but obviously you can see this dark, uh, I wouldn't really call it purple, but uh, next to these flowers, it kind of gives off a purple hue. But that's, I've only really seen that on the native like this. The non-native over here is, is green pretty much the whole way up. Now there is non-native varieties that come in different colors. Uh, there's, I've seen red, I've seen white. And normally when I have seen a non-native porterweed, the flower has been a much darker purple, almost a blue versus this kind of violet color that the native porterweed has. Um, but these are really close to each other, making it difficult to use the flower alone for identification. And those are my big takeaways for distinguishing native versus non-native porterweeds. Obviously your nursery is gonna be uh, probably the safest place to start as far as differentiating. You know, if I'm going to a regular box store nursery, uh, there is basically a 0% chance that that's gonna be a native porterweed. Um, however, if I'm going to a native nursery that I trust, then, you know, my chances of having a native porterweed are much higher. Hey girl, we got some visitors coming over. And um, the other thing is, is we need to keep in mind that the non-native is definitely more popular because it's more available. So when we see plants that are in landscapes already or maybe have escaped a landscape and now are along the side of the road or whatever, um, basically we probably should be assuming that those are non-native porterweeds until we can prove it otherwise. And unfortunately, because there are so many more non-native varieties, we also have to assume that anything we're finding um, outside of a landscape is potentially going to be a hybrid. And that's why these non-native porterweeds are considered a class two invasive plant here in Florida because of the high chance of them hybridizing with our natives, all right? And that's one of the criteria for the evaluation of invasive plants in Florida. So really, I think if, if you know, if you're a uh, supporter of native gardening and you're finding porterweeds that, you know, you can't verify the original source of, then 
we have to assume that it's a hybrid at best and potentially need removal and replaced with a native that we've been able to get from a trustworthy source or one that we've propagated ourselves from the original native mother plant. So anyway, that's my two cents on that. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed learning about the differences between these two porta weeds and that it's a useful tool for you in the future. And if you have any questions or comments or want me to talk about a different species next, uh, just drop a comment down below or send us a message. Thanks for watching.